everyone. Welcome to the week zero edition of the Transfer Portal Gambling Show. Only two of us this week. I'm joined by Matt. Matt, how are we doing? We are lonely. We are degenerates and we are here. We are here to spend some money. Oh, uh, no, we're here to win some money. Absolutely. Week zero, first, first week. Uh, I just call week one. I don't know why they call week zero, but I'm excited. Uh, the slate's a little, not a little poopy, but you know, we're still going to get our, get our plays in there. So I guess we can, I mean, Austin PA, Western Kentucky, if we're going down the entire slate, we're not touching. I don't want to touch that game with a I, I, I feel like Nebraska Northwestern, that's where our plays are going to come in our first game of the year. So uh, where are you leaning on that? Uh, I have two plays in there in the battle of Dublin for obviously for all the teams, their first official game. I think it's, I think this is going to be an ugly one. I think this number, the over and under it's at 49 and a half. You can find it at 50 at some places. It's being pushed up a lot by the fact that Nebraska scored 56 on Northwestern last year, mm-hmm. that defense that Northwestern had in that game, the defense that'll be out there on the field today is a much improved defense. And obvious, and Nebraska didn't touch, didn't go over 30 in any of the rest of the games that year. So that game was not representative of at all of what the was probably going to happen in actuality. I think, I think the at 50 is generous here, and I'm going easily on the under in my first play. Yeah, I completely agree. I love the under. I also have two plays in this game. I love the under in this game. I think that 50, 50 and a half is a big number for a week one game between two teams that aren't known for scoring a ton of points. Yeah, like you said, Nebraska scored 56 points against them last year. But like, I just think that also putting this game in Dublin is a little weird because like you're not going to get the same crowd atmosphere, I feel like. You're not going to – I have no idea. It could be electric, but I feel like it's just not going to be like the same as being at home for Northwestern or being at home for Nebraska. So – and like, yeah, I don't know what these kids are going to be jet lagged. I don't know how long they've been there. I don't know like what the feeling is going to be, but I think that's like – coming off the plane you're playing in ireland it's two teams that haven't been great lately uh yeah i'm definitely on that under for sure i think um there's not going to be a time i had a dream that the game ended six to three a couple weeks ago so i'm sticking with my dream and i'm going under 50 so what do you like in northwestern nebraska spread west I like Northwestern plus 13 and a half. I just think this game is going to be low scoring enough that it stays within two touchdowns. I don't know. I, I don't know that Nebraska scores two touchdowns in this game. So I don't know how they might, how they're going to beat someone by two touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, I had my dream six to three, but I just kind of, I, I, 13 to me is kind of big, but I know Northwestern, like their defense is a humongous question mark. Casey Thompson is a much improved quarterback to Adrian Martinez that when Nebraska's had in the past, I think the offense is going to be a little bit better. And I just, I don't see Northwestern scoring, but I can see Nebraska putting up three touchdowns in Northwest three, four touchdowns in the Northwestern kind of pulling the ball ground and pounding and not putting up points. So I'm on the Cornhuskers here. I know it's like the popular pick. Everyone's on the Cornhuskers. Um, but yeah, I like I like Nebraska. 13 I think they win by I think they win by 14 to 17 so I'm cutting it really close but I think giving me that point to be at 13 instead of 14 is going to make me take Nebraska yeah if this was at 14 and a half I'm I'm just hammering Northwestern here oh yeah half it's like eh, you know they could they could lose this they could lose this game 21 7 so easily and then that happens yeah I I got it at 13 on drafting so I mean I took it this morning I think just because I I feel like it's going to move to 14 uh, cause 13, just like, that's the number that you want 14, 15. I'm not touching it. I'm just laying, I'm just taking the under, but yeah, the 13, I like. Yeah. I also think the weather might be a factor here. So it, it doesn't, from what I looked at, it's not scheduled it's not forecasted to rain on Saturday, but on Friday it is going to rain. And then Saturday it's going to be like the highest 60 mid sixties. So I think, I think that's going to help with the under obviously for both of us. And then I think it's going to help keep the game close for the, for the it's going to be cloudy because it's Ireland. But you got Big Ten weather there. Um, do you like? I don't even know where they're playing, honestly. Dublin. I don't. I don't know. I assume. I don't know the stadium though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, are they? I assume it's in a soccer stadium. Viva Stadium. Let's take a little gander at the capacity real quick. We're going off the rails for a second here, guys. So I don't know anything. I don't know if they play rugby there or what the Viva Stadium. Fifty-one thousand. Pretty big. Yeah, I think it's like their national stadium. So like, uh, yeah, it's a national stadium. It's for the it's for the rugby team and the uh, soccer team play. 
for football team. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm on Nebraska. Matt's on Northwestern. We're both on the under to start the week. Uh, Idaho State UNLV, again, not going to touch that with 10 pole. pole. Um, no idea. I don't even know. The, the lines for the FCS games aren't even out yet, so we're just going to kind of skip over those. I'll bring them up. Uh, but, yeah, not touching that. UConn, Utah State, I believe that's for you. You have a play there. I do. I have Utah State minus 27 and a half. I just think this UConn team is miserable. They've got, they finally got rid of Randy Edsall after a miserable, miserable couple of years. I think it sit, went six and 36 and something terrible like that. And they bring in Jim, Jim Mora Jr. who had a respectable stint at USC. However, this is like, so he, he rebuilt some things at UCLA, not USC, I said USC, at UCLA. But I think this rebuild is tenfold in difficulty in terms of what they have there. I think from what I'm, I'm hearing, Taquan Roberson is going to be the starter. My and guy. What I remember at Penn State, he he wasn't great when he was on the field. You you can speak more to that. He was very you not great is like that's you being nice. He was bad when he played for us. Yeah, but maybe maybe a change of scenery is what he needed. And then UConn also lost by far its best player on either side of the ball in Travis Jones. He did the draft last year. He's a third round pick. So they're, they're, that defense is going to be struggling up front. And I just think this Aggie squad is far superior. I think they're, they're going to they're compete in the Mountain West with Boise and with Air Force. And I think Logan Bonner is just going to run up the score on this team and put him, at, put him to bed pretty quickly. Yeah. So for me, I kind of I'm, – I'm not – this is not an official play for me. I'm obviously going to lean Utah State. You brought up some good points. And for me, like, uh, like a running narrative that I'm going to have for, like, this week's show – week one when like it's these early games I really do feel like travel takes a toll on these kids because going from UConn to Utah that's like that's a long that's a long like travel day like it's not a quick flight and then like Utah State they don't have to go anywhere and they're just there's a better football team UConn is I'm a le- I'm leaning Utah State minus 27 we'll see where I'm at around four o'clock not going to be an official play for me but i that's a lean for sure because i do not trust the huskies whatsoever it's a big spread but deservedly so like you can't come out and tell them it's a two touchdown spread early for this team yeah like U- uconn won one game last year and it, they they should have lost every game they were in probably probably 20 yeah so it's been I, a really tough season for them and let's move on. I believe the next game on the slate is Wyoming, Illinois. I don't think we have anything for that, right? I'd lean Illinois here. Wyoming has a good enough defense that I stayed – I mean, Wyoming always has a good defense that I stayed far enough away that maybe Illinois doesn't pull away by 10. But I would lean to my, minus 10 here, but it's close. Yeah, I mean, I you – know, the only thing I know about Wyoming football is Josh Allen went there. Illinois ripped my heart out last year. I believe Sikowski's the quarterback this year. I haven't really been keeping up with the fighting line eye. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of a no play for me. But that's me leaning Illinois minus 11. I think that's probably a f- giving the benefit of the doubt at home, uh, Wyoming coming in there. Duquesne, Florida State, that is a no play because, uh, yeah, I, just, I don't know anything about Duquesne. I mean, Duc- could Duquesne beat last year, Pitt? Yeah. Who they beat? Oh, was it? I think it was Pitt. I think it was Pitt, right? Duquesne yeah. just, just recruited Bryce James, so big ups to them on that. Yeah. Big, big, big moves for the Dukes basketball program. Duquesne, Dukes football. I believe it was Pitt. That was a terrible loss for them. Let's see. This is great radio right now. I can't even find it. Um, Maybe it wasn't last year. Beat Ohio. That's what that's what it was. It was Ohio because on the Mac show, I knew they beat somebody I talked about. Yeah, they beat Ohio. I don't think they beat Florida State. Uh, next play, Charlotte FAU. I don't know if you were playing this, but I'm on FAU get, uh, giving the touchdown. I'll take the touchdown. Um, I just think FAU is – a better team than Charlotte. They both went five and seven last year, missed a bowl. But last year, FAU beat Charlotte 38 to nine on the road, easily covering the spread. Uh, Nikosi Perry, the old Miami quarterback, is under center for the Owls. Willie Taggart's still their head coach. I just think that they're, a, I just think that they are a better team. I think a touchdown is like right where it should be at. 
Uh, Charlotte's quarterback, Chris Reynolds, is he's all right. He averaged 246 in the air last year and didn't throw a ton of picks, 26 touchdowns. So he's like a solid uh, power five guy, but he did not play well against FAU. Threw for 219 and two picks. And I just think that FAU's, FAU's defense, uh, they only have 21 points a game. So, I mean, coming off, they're going to come out firing. Uh, I think Florida Atlantic will easily cover the seven at home. Yeah, I, I would agree. Like they, they both went five and seven, but I think FAU's bit due for a big bounce back here because, like, two of the past five years, they were 10 11 win team. So, that, like, that, the five and seven kind of came out of the blue. I think they should be competing for a bowl this, this year, and I, I think they're a far superior team. I, so, I don't have an official play on minus seven, but that was what I, when I first saw the spread, I was like, yeah, FAU. Yeah, I think the total, I mean, I was looking at the over to the total, but again, like, Charlotte put up no points against them last year. So if I were to take another play, it'd be the – I'd lean the over, but I'm definitely on that touchdown for FAU. Um, I think that's going to be a fun game. CBS Sports, tune in because I don't think there's any – yeah, there's a, that's the only 7 o'clock game on Saturday. So I'm sure it'll be on my TV. Uh, Florida A&M, North Carolina. There's no line for this yet. I don't know what the line's going to be. I'm going to assume it's going to be around 40. Yeah. Um, if I can find it, if I can take it, if I can put it up on tally site, whatever, I'm going to take the UNC spread, whatever it is. Uh, uh, Florida A&M has I, – I just know Florida A&M. They've got great jerseys, great logo, Rattler's sick name. But when they play, like, Power 5 schools, they just constantly get crushed. And I think UNC's having a bounce back here this year. I think Drake May is going to be really, really good for them. So if it's – I mean, give me 35 on this, if that's what it comes out to. Uh Whatever that spread is that comes out, I'm taking UNC. This is gonna this is, this will probably be one when the spread comes out that I'll be on the first half. Just like give me my minus yeah. 27 and a half, 21 and 21, whatever it is. Give, give me them to get blown out in the first half, and I'll ride with that. Let's check as action have anything out yet. I, I when I looked, I couldn't find anything. Yeah, it's not on any of the sports books again. I don't know how this like it's kind of weird because they have none of the FCS games are out yet. Yeah, no sports books are giving it yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that first half play is good as well. I think that might actually be a better play now that I think about it because you don't know how these guys are going to, these uh, like third, fourth stringers are going to perform, but we'll see what it is. But yeah, I think first half and the spread are good plays for that game. Um, UTEP in North Texas. You got anything there? No, I think, I think the books have them bright. This one, I think. North, last I looked, North Texas was minus one. I think this is a pick em. This is a toss up to me. I don't know. I, I, I don't have it. I don't, I don't have any big lean on which team I think is better here. I think this is going to be a close game right down to the wire. So I think the yeah. Bucks have it here. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, it's going to be, is it on? Like, yes, I don't know. It's a, it's a nine o'clock game. I think like even is right where it should be at. UTEP is trying to fill up the Sun Bowl. I think they're doing an orange ad or something. Um, this is probably a game I'm going to try to catch live. It's going to be a great game because these are two of the better teams in that conference. Uh, UTEP had one of their better years in – I think it was the first time they made a bowl last year, so the first time in like 80 years or whatever, but they were really good last year. North Texas, um, just they, they're, they're very, very potent offense. Uh, last year, they didn't score a ton of points. I think they combined for like 35, maybe underneath 35, somewhere around there. So I'm not – like, I, exactly. I don't have any plays, but I'll probably try to catch something – or maybe I get a few beverages in me. I go for the over. We'll see. But I think that's definitely going to be a fun game to watch. If I bet anything here, it'd literally be North Texas, and it'd be entirely based off of their their basketball team won me so much money last year. Oh yeah, <laughs> because and North, North, really North really Texas unders they were the slowest basketball team uh, in terms of pace, what by like ten points. So like they would like their so normal totals are like 120, 130 and like a power five. The, they, theirs were like 190 and you just hammer the under and it hit anyways yeah yeah i mean, i do remember that because i would also i mean yeah i mean college basketball that's those under i love taking the big unders the small with like because i know that they uh they beat purdue a couple years ago in basketball in North texas and yeah. that was awesome they're they're a good basketball program they're a solid power five program in football but uh that'll be a fun game no uh, official plays from us so we'll move on to the next. We got two more games on the slate. I think that's how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 11. So we've gone through nine. Nevada, New Mexico State at Nevada. This is nationally televised 10 p.m. on ESPN2. This one, I'm, it's, 
I'd lean Nevada just because I, I New Mexico State. I don't think they're a good football team, but I, I just don't know what this Nevada team is going to look like with with without Carson Strong, without Romeo Dubs. I think this team is going to look so much different I, that I just don't know what they look like. That I'm not going to le- go towards minus nine because this spread dropped like crazy when th- when the spread came out for this game. I think it was minus seventeen and a half, and it's dropped all the way down to nine and a half now. So seventeen and a half is a crazy number. Nine and a half is more more reasonable. And I'd still lean the nine and a half here, but it's just, I don't know what they're going to look like. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I definitely dropped a lot. Dropping was at eight points is kind of nuts. Um, I, 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 I'm going to get a nine. I'm going to get at nine. Excuse me. Uh, I like the Wolfpack here just solely because I just think New Mexico State's one of the worst programs in the country. Uh, you, there's, like you said, a ton of uncertainty with Nevada. No Carson Strong, no Romeo Dobbs. Dubs, however you pronounce his name, um, that's my guy. Go pack. But yeah, um, it's 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 gonna be nationally televised. I'm just gonna take it because last year they stopped them. I think they beat them like 55 to 20 something. They beat them by five scores and uh, nine is small. I mean, the problem is I looked it up and they have no starters. They haven't announced a starting quarterback. They haven't announced a starting running back. Their receivers are all up for grabs. Who's playing X Y Z? Uh, it's just like it's kind of tough to take a team when you don't know who's starting for them before the game even starts, but I'm going to take a shot with a nine. That's going to be an official play for me just because I don't think New Mexico state is it's, it's, it's week one. And I just, it's week zero. And I just, I just think they're a bad program. So I'm going to take the nine with the wolf back. And we're talking about all this turnover with Nevada, New Mexico state's facing its own fair share of turnover. They have a new head coach mm-hmm. too, new, new starters and a lot of positions. So it's not like they're some established team that just like knows exactly what we're, we know exactly what they're going to look like. We know they're probably going to be bad, but we just, we still, we don't know what they're going to look like either. So it, all this uncertainty we're talking about in Nevada, that's the same with New Mexico state. So mm-hmm. I, I, like your shot in the dark. I think that's where you find value sometimes and just the spreads come down because we don't know what Nevada's going to look like. So take it at nine, see what, see what we get. Yeah. I mean, worst case it's, it's it speaks zero. I'll, I'll build, I'll build my credit back up, but yeah, uh, I'm Nevada there last game of the last game of the week. This is probably the game I'm most excited for just because I love watching Hawaii football, Hawaii Vanderbilt um, Vanderbilt going to Hawaii to me is hilarious that <laughs> they could get Hawaii to come to them, but yeah, Vanderbilt, Hawaii. What you got? I I have I have the Hawaii spread here, and I have the Hawaii money line here. I'm excited to see what this Hawaii team look like because from what I'm hearing, their offense is going to be run and gun, and it is going to be fun. This is another play where I'm interested in Hawaii everywhere. So, a fun little stat I looked I found out about Vanderbilt when I was researching this: they were minus 105 in first quarter scoring differential last year. They were outscored 134 to 29. So don't be surprised if this Hawaii offense with their run and gun style comes out and just puts up points in a hurry and Van- Vanderbilt just can't catch up because they averaged 15 points a game last year. Hawaii can, if, if this run and gun offense is legit, they can do that in a quarter. And then Van- Vanderbilt just can't catch up. Vander- this, and this Vanderbilt team won two games last year by a combined five points to a miserable UConn team and a nearly as bad Colorado State team. Like Vanderbilt is awful. Give me Hawaii. Yeah, I'm completely on board with you. I'm all over Hawaii. I'm definitely – I'm all over that plus eight. I, like the fact that it went from seven to eight makes me ecstatic. Uh, this is a fun little stat that I uh, – shout out uh, Barstool Sportsbook, their bet stats. Uh, Hawaii in their last 12 openers, 11-1 against the spread. So the football guys are telling me that Hawaii is a good play here. Uh, I, I get – you got to give Vanderbilt the touchdown because they're an SCS school – SEC school, excuse me. Wow, that was really bad. Cut that out. In SEC school, um, you got to give them the touch. I'm, I like you said, Hawaii's going to run and gun it. it should, they're just like, it's just going to be a fun game to watch. And again, like I said before, with the Connecticut uh, Utah State game, Vanderbilt's got to go all the way to Hawaii. Nashville, Hawaii is not an easy trip. And That's Hawaii, awesome. these kids have been in Hawaii. It's going to be, I'm going to assume it's going to be hot. Let me, let me check the weather. I would assume. It's Hawaii. It's it's always bra- yeah, it's. I mean, it's hot New York. Like, it's got to be hot in Honolulu. Yeah, and like, I, I live in California. I've flown to Hawaii a couple times. It's a long flight from Hawaii to California. From from yeah. Nashville to go, it, that's they're going to be exhausted. And Hawaii, there. It's just, it's no fun to bet against Hawaii. I don't care how good or bad they are. I will always take Hawaii. I love them. And 
Hawaii lives to make our money back at the end of the night. It's a, it's a rough, it's been a rough college football betting day, college basketball betting day, whatever it is. You know who's got your back? Hawaii has your back. Hawaii, th- those Rainbow Warriors are going to go out there and they're going to fight for your bread. Yeah, like I said before, in Nevada, I'll take the nine just because I'll take a shot in the dark. That doesn't hit. Double down Hawaii and I'll make my money back. I just, it's just, it's no fun taking Vanderbilt. They got that awful new logo. Um, I just don't, I, I don't see them. Will Vanderbilt win? It's going to be a close game because, like you said, they barely beat Colorado State. They barely beat uh, UConn. And, like, Hawaii is going to be pumped up for this game. It's Vanderbilt, but it's an SEC school. I don't know if Hawaii's ever even played an SEC school, let alone beat one. I, I'm not familiar with my Hawaii football history. But, yeah, I mean, I, now that you said that Hawaii is the first quarter stat with Vanderbilt being terrible in the first quarter, I'm going to go Hawaii first quarter. Uh, I might go Hawaii first half. Definitely going Hawaii spread, and we'll sprinkle the money line a little bit. Let's go it's all over the Rainbow Warriors this week. And then in, in addition to that 11, the 11 one against the spread you had for Hawaii, the last three get openers for Vanderbilt, they've lost, including last year. Do you remember who they lost to? They lost 23-3 to to East Tennessee State. Oh, I do remember that. Like, they yeah. Were- like, yeah, they're an SEC school, but Hawaii can beat this team. Hawaii, yeah. Hawaii can definitely beat that. Uh, what's that money line at? Let's, is it like 385 or something? Plus 50 to plus 300 is what I saw. I'm take, I think I got it at plus 285. Yeah, plus 270 now, so it moved. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a that just it's just no fun, Ben. Again, you got to take Hawaii. I'm all over them. Yeah, so that's it from us. To recap, let's, let's do a little recap. I'll give out my plays. I am on Nebraska minus 13. I'm on under 50 and a half Nebraska Northwestern. I'm going to lean Utah State. I'm on FAU minus seven. UNC, whatever the spread is. I'm on Nevada minus nine. I'm on Hawaii pretty much any which way I can take it. That's a 1030 game. And I'm going to take it any which way. Yeah, I have my official plays are Nebraska Northwestern under 49 and a half, Northwestern plus 13 and a half, Hawaii money line at plus 285, Hawaii spread at plus seven and a half, uh, Utah State spread at minus 27 and a half. And whenever that number comes out, the UNC first half spread. Then I have a lean on Nevada minus nine and on, who was it? And on Illinois minus, t- minus 10, I have a lean on both of those. That, but my official plays are as listed above. All right. Well, from us at the Transfer Portal CFB, I'm Dave. I was with Matt. Uh, like this video, subscribe. Pretty much we're on, we're on everything uh, that you can think of. Check out our articles. Uh, that's our Week Zero show. See you next week for Week 1. Let's win some money. Ooh.